Okay, reductionism is when you take a phenomena and you um, try to reduce it down to its principles and sort of individual parts in order to figure it out. And this is true in the sense that often things will be uh, made up from parts and uh, dismantling them and um, breaking them up, reducing them into uh, their core principles is a good way of figuring a lot of things out. Problem with reductionism is that it's making a false assumption that all things are reducible, whereas phenomena is sometimes a sort of synthesis of the, uh, you know, individual parts that made up that phenomena. So in that case, it has like new properties. It's its own like unique entity. It's not necessarily reducible. And then you cannot apply reductionism. Um, I guess Hegel's uh, idea of the collective could be an example of that. Like, I don't think you can apply reductionism to Hegel's conception of the collective. Empiricism. Okay, empiricism is true in the sense that most information we get, or a large portion of it, is through our senses, and that scientific methods and experimentation and evidence are really good ways to uh, figure things out and uh, new systems and stuff. The problem with, it, with uh, empiricism is that it, it denies an entire other channel of knowledge um, that exists within the human being, and that's like the more mythological, primordial, intuitive side. And um, yeah, I'm actually reading uh, Jordan Peterson's Maps of Meaning right now, and he's actually talking about this, about how there's like these like two realms, there's like the empirical and there's the mythological, and both are ways to know the world, like to actually know it. And if you ignore one, you are not knowing everything. Um, but empiricists don't like that because it, they don't feel safe within um, things that are not uh, measurable. And so, uh, so they deny that part.